If your child doesn't earn only A grades, you could be one of the many worried parents who worry about how well their child does in school. However, keep in mind that attaining absolute perfection is neither necessary nor desired. You perceive if your child is intelligent enough to enroll in a good school, they will be intelligent enough to succeed. There is no connection between riches and intelligence. True, a small percentage of Nobel laureates in chemistry and medicine from the United States attended elite institutions like Harvard and MIT. All that mattered was that they attended reputable institutions of higher learning, which were mostly unknown to the general population. You may have other goals in mind for your child besides a Nobel Prize. In this regard, too, those with higher IQs do not do better than their less intelligent peers in terms of marital satisfaction. They are not doing a better job of parenting than those with less intelligence. Furthermore, IQ accounts for just around 4% of the variation in productivity on the job. To that end, what can we do to ensure that our children develop the requisite intelligence to enter competitive secondary institutions? There are two methods that, from this point of view, are the most efficient for imparting knowledge and fostering growth. The first is to make errors mandatory for your child. I realize the vibe I've defined, but trust me when I say this is the most efficient method available. We have a built-in system in our brains that has evolved over millions of years to help us swiftly correct our mistakes and improve our overall standard of living. Now, in a school setting, the suffering of failure and the struggle to recover from it generate an intense feeling that promotes the process of encoding new information in long-term memory. The second step is the acquisition of new information. Basically, when we learn anything new, we essentially construct a new neural pathway in our brains. When we continually adopt this approach, its integrity is strengthened. Therefore, the neural networks necessary to retrieve the data are strengthened. Similarly, when your child comes home with homework or test prep, encourage them to do it before doing anything else. Spend some time with them when they're done and ask questions. That's how much they know. Each correct response fortifies a brain pathway leading to that specific aspect of knowledge. Don't keep them in custody if they can't provide an answer. Please don't do that. Gentle with them. Let them make mistakes with you instead of being embarrassed in front of their schoolmates. As a result, you should have them practice over and over the sections they are suffering with. Research has shown that if you say something six times, you're far more likely to remember it. Another thing, we remember things better if we do them in different places, so let them do in the living room, then the kitchen, then the garden, any place. When your children grow up, you may still be of assistance by making your home a place where learning is encouraged. In contrast to cramming for hours the night before an exam, studying a little bit every night for five nights is much more effective preparation. Lastly, one more thing. Make sure your children and adolescents receive adequate sleep. It has been shown to increase memory by at least 15%. It won't just boost their memory but their temper and resistance to illness as well. Thanks for watching this lecture. Stay connected.